Okay, let's talk about the EOCT geometry test. And what that stands for is the Georgia End of Test Program. So if you're a high school student in Georgia, which I assume you are, you should be familiar with these EOCT or End of Course Test in various subjects. So other states have other type of uh, programs, or programs that are similar to this. It's just uh, the EOCT is the one you have to uh, take or deal with as a high school student in the state of Georgia. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are in fact finishing up a geometry course in Georgia, so that's excellent. And you are preparing for the EOCT. So that's good too, because you wanna take this test serious. I don't know exactly um, the way Georgia does it in terms of issuing credit or how it impacts your, your overall grade, but it definitely has a uh, impact on your um, your record, so you want to definitely take it serious. So what we're going to do here is take a look at a practice problem that you very well could encounter uh, on the EOCT geometry um, test. But before we get going, uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over uh, several years, I've constructed a lot of uh, online math courses to include uh, EOCT geometry uh, test prep course. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Very comprehensive uh, program. I've taught geometry for several years, so definitely know what your teachers um, are kind of going for in terms of your level of understanding for geometry. It's a very, very important course um, indeed. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. And I'm going to give uh, you some hints as we um, get into this problem. Obviously, I'm going to solve it here, but I want to give you an opportunity uh, to first, you know, give it a whirl. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we got. So we have a shape here. This happens to be a cylinder. Okay, and here is the volume of that cylinder. So now I have some variables here, R being the radius, H being the height. Okay, and I have some sort of relationship here between those two variables. So I'd like you to go ahead and tell me uh, what R and H are, okay? So I wanna know the radius and the height of this particular uh, cylinder. So you got your given information, and uh, if you think you know how to do it, go ahead and pause the video and uh, do so. Now, for those of you out there saying, I, I know how to do this, or I think I know how to do it, but I forgot the formula, for the volume of a cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that to you now. So the, for, the formula for a volume of a cylinder is volume equals pi r squared times h, okay? So that's the volume uh, formula for the volume of a cylinder. So you're gonna need that in order to solve this. So anyways, hopefully with that hint, you can go ahead and actually uh, solve the problem. Okay, so now I'm actually going to uh, go ahead and solve it. So if you want to pause the video, keep working on it without seeing, you know, how I do it, that's fine as well. But let's let's get into it and solve this thing. All right, so we know that the volume equals pi r squared times h, r being the radius and h being the height of the cylinder. But we're given the volume, and it's 81 pi inches cubed. So remember, volume is always going to come in uh, units cubed, all right, versus area, which is units squared, okay? And then of course, like distance or length is just basic uh, units. So when we're talking about units of measure, be very careful when you calculate area or volume that you put in the correct units of measure. Um, most teachers are gonna dock you points if you don't, you know, uh, uh, in your final answers, uh, indicate the precise units of measure, okay? That's an important, uh, comment there. So here we're dealing with inches cubed, so our radius and height will be in inches, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get uh, to this. So we know our volume is 81 uh, times pi inches cubed. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute this V here for the 81 uh, pi. So let's go and do that now. So 81 pi is our volume, and I have pi on this side of the equation, but now I'm going to have to uh, work on this R squared and this H. So I'm kind of, uh, my um, formula here or my relationship is saying my height 
is three times my radius. Okay, so in other words, this is one, two, three. So my height is uh, three times whatever the radius is going to be. Okay, so I want to substitute this 3r for this h. So I have an equation in one variable. So we'll have r squared here. But for my height, instead of using h, I'm going to use 3r. Okay. So with that being uh, set up, hopefully, you know, you understand this. Now this is just basic algebra, okay, stuff that you should have, you know, hopefully mastered uh, in your previous year. So if you understand this, I would say go ahead and pause the video if you haven't already done this, okay, and see if you can solve uh, for R, okay. So let's go ahead and do this now. So this would be 81 pi equals pi. R squared times 3 times R is going to be 3 times R cubed, okay? Now, I wouldn't want to write it precisely like this. A better way of writing it would be 81 pi equals uh, 3 pi R cubed. Okay, and of course, we know pi is just a number, okay, a value, 3.14 on and on and on, but it doesn't make a difference because now I could just divide both sides of this equation by three pi. Okay, what I want to do is isolate the r cubed. All right, so when I do that, my pi's here are going to cross cancel. Of course, it's just going to be one, and 81 divided by three will be 27. Okay, so I have 27 r cubed, and now I just need to take the cube root of both sides, and so the cube root, in other words, what number times itself three times is 27, obviously that's going to be three, okay, so r is equal to three. All right, so if you're able to get to this point, then that's uh, excellent, okay? So now, what's our radius? Well, our radius would be three what? Well, remember, we're talking about length here, three inches, and my height is going to be three times my radius, so three times three would be nine inches, okay? And there is the solution. Okay, so hopefully uh, that went pretty uh, smooth for you guys out there. You know, if you for, um, were able to do this without even me giving, uh, giving you the formula, that's excellent, okay? Uh, if you were able to do it with uh, just me giving you the formula, then that's excellent as well. Now remember, uh, on these tests, oftentimes you're given uh, formulas. Uh, there could be like a formula sheet. Now, I don't know the specifics of the Georgia and the course test, but almost all kind of uh, standardized tests, etc., typically will have a formula sheet. So make sure you know what formulas are going to be on there, okay, um, and which ones you're going to need to know by memory. Okay, just don't try to memorize all formulas because then uh, students have a tendency to confuse those. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. So what I tell all students is in, in these tests, okay, you're taking geometry, you have a teacher, your teacher, you know, is right there on the front lines with you. They're going to know the most in terms of what you need to do specifically to prepare for the EOCT uh, geometry. So listen to your teacher, maximize all your resources there. But beyond, uh, if you feel like you need to, uh, something else to supplement, then something like my EOCT geometry prep course is uh, real powerful, okay? So again, I'm gonna leave the link to that in the description of this video. But uh, if you're new to my YouTube um, uh, channel, I've been on YouTube for about 12 years uh, at the time of this video, always posting a ton of maths uh, videos, tips, all different subjects. But I already have a lot on geometry on my channel that can help you out. So hopefully you consider becoming a subscriber. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, how do you like geometry? How, how's it you know gone for you? What I found through the years is that students either have liked geometry or they dislike geometry. Uh, and one of the uh, parts of geometry that students kind of, you know, generally don't like too much is the proofs. Okay, so if you had to do proofs, dealing, you know, trying to prove things and whatnot, and you didn't like that, well, guess what? 99% of geometry students are kind of <laughs> in that same realm because it is kind of, you know, you're learning about uh, logic and, uh, you know, postulates, theorems, and how to apply all these things. So, yeah, geometry is one of those, you know, 
courses that a lot of the stuff you learn is going to be new, but it's extremely important, uh, not only in your course in the EOCT uh, test, okay, but in the future, okay, so for things like the standardized tests like the SAT or ACT or uh, other entrance exams or placement tests, you're going to have to know geometry. So don't get rid of your notes and, you know, study hard and don't forget what you learn. Let's just say that much. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the EOCT geometry um, exam. And uh, I wish you, you know, um, furthermore, you know, uh, all the best in your high school career and your goals. So thank you for your time and have a great day.